Forget the jokes about midlife crises and pinky rings. This is the C7 Corvette, the seventh generation. And more than ever, it drives that one stereotype home. This is a lot of bang for your buck. It's easy to be misled that the C7 Corvette hasn't changed too much from the C6 generation. Starting with the engine here, which retains that 6.2 liter displacement. Don't be fooled. This engine is substantially different. There's only a handful of parts carried over from the last generation. In addition to raising the power output, the Corvette team has also improved fuel economy, and they've done that by installing what they call active fuel management. We like to call it cylinder deactivation. It makes this V8 run as a 3.1 liter V4 when you're in low load cruising situations. There is another big change under the hood too, and if you look down far enough, you'll notice the steering rack, electric power steering, big shift away from hydraulic. Everybody's doing it, Corvette has to as well. And uh, in our drive of the car, we noticed that really good effort, not so great on the feedback, but that's kind of typical of the way these electric power steering systems are. The Corvette has a rich racing heritage, and one of the lessons learned from the C6R was the advantages of canting the radiator forward rather than backwards. And because of that, air now exits through the top of the hood rather than under the car. So you notice this very prominent ductwork here when you open the hood, and this vent that it seals up to on the hood. Now, one of the difficulties here is how do you manage moisture during rain or snowfall. Of course, they've accounted for that, and you have drain systems down in this ductwork to kind of clear the system out and deal with any weather. So that's how you keep the engine cool when you're calling on all 460 horsepower. Now let's put the car up on the lift and take a look underneath where there's some even more significant changes. So perhaps the single biggest change for C7 is the shift from a steel chassis to an aluminum chassis. You can catch glimpses of it under the body. It's hard to find a big exposed section of frame rail, but right here, this black painted piece, this is part of the aluminum structure. Now this gave Chevy some pretty significant weight savings. When we put the C7 on the scale, it weighed in at 3,444 pounds. That's about 100 pounds heavier than a C6 Grand Sport. What's going on here? Why isn't the C7 lighter? Actually, it's because of all the additional features and equipment. Up front, new engine hardware adds about 30 pounds. Inside, infotainment equipment adds another 30 pounds. Combine that with the fact that the C7 is actually larger than the C6, and that's where you get the weight gain. So this is a Z51 Corvette, which adds a bunch of performance equipment. And key among those is this dry sump oiling system. Rather than a wet sump with the oil reservoir right under the engine, you have these two lines right here, and they carry the oil off into a reservoir over there. And uh, what that does is in high G cornering, it makes sure there's a constant supply of lubrication to the engine, rather than pushing all that oil into the one side of the pan. Another thing you're gonna notice under here, well, you'll have a hard time noticing because it's way up there, is the torque tube in this C7 Corvette. It's now steel rather than aluminum. And the reason they've done that is because operating in V4 mode introduces some vibrations. And in order to dampen those, they've used steel. In previous videos, you guys have asked us to remove the plastic aero trays underneath the car. We'd love to do that for you, except what you see in the Corvette is what you get. These aren't just aero panels, this is actually the floor panel, and it's a composite. In the C6, there was balsa wood sandwiched in there for insulation and stiffness. They've now switched to a foam, which actually makes it lighter and helps with, the, uh, with sound insulation. You're gonna notice here on the transmission tunnel, this is an aluminum stiffening brace along with the other reinforcements in the chassis, the C7 Corvette is now 60% stiffer than the C6. Now one of the biggest changes, the biggest headlines for the C7 is this seven speed manual transmission. It's made by Tremec still, and to get that seventh gear in there, they added a couple inches and about eight pounds or so to the weight of the transmission. The Z51 package also adds transmission and differential oil coolers. You'll see those right back here if you follow the lines to either side. Those are mounted in the rear fenders. 
Now, if you look at the car when it's sitting on the ground, you'll notice vents on either fender. Those vents take air, feed it through the fender and out the rear fascia. And in between that area, there's a cooler for both the differential and the transmission. Now, key to fade-free braking performance is keeping the brakes cool when you're repeatedly hammering on them on a track. So you'll notice brake ducts here and an additional scoop behind the wheel that actually feeds air directly at the rotors to keep them cool. Now right here we have the traditional Corvette transverse composite spring. People love to rag on the Corvette saying it has leaf springs just like a pickup truck. But if you've ever looked under a pickup truck, you can tell this does not look like the underside of a pickup. This is one single piece rather than multiple leaves and it's composite rather than metal. And uh, the advantage here is packaging, center of gravity, lightweight, and uh, it's worked well for Corvette for many years and it continues on in the seventh generation. Directly above that spring is the new ELSD. That comes with the Z51 package. That's an electronically controlled limited slip differential. Improves stability and cornering, and uh, then as you power out, begins to lock up again to put the power to the ground. Another option independent of the Z51 package are these MR dampers. They have magnetic fluid inside of them. And by changing the magnetic field, you can change how viscous that fluid is, effectively changing the damping rate. And it really goes a long ways to making the Corvette ride smoothly on beat up roads, and yet really control body motion when you're hammering it on a track. The dual mode exhaust has become a signature on the Corvette. It just makes this car sound so mean. For exhaust tips, these outer two have butterfly valves inside. When that valve is open, then you get a much more aggressive sound. The Z51 package upsizes the wheels, front and rear, from 18 to 19 inches to 19 and 20 inches. But whether you get a base Corvette or one of these well-equipped versions, you always get Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. And these go a long way to making the Corvette handle how it does. On the skid pad, we saw 1.08 G of lateral grip. Incredible. In our testing, the C7 Corvette came to a stop from 70 miles per hour in 146 fade-free feet. Over and over and over again, we got consistent stopping distances. Now, in that time, the pedal did get a bit softer but we never saw any significant increase in stopping distances. In fact, our shortest stop was the final stop. Take a look at the hardware here. On the Z51 package, you have a larger rotor, but no matter how your Corvette is specced, there's always four piston fixed calipers up front. So that's the C7. As you can see, there's a lot of tradition in this car, and that's what makes it a Corvette but they've also put a lot of new technology in it that makes it even better than the C6 that came before it. We can't wait to see what they do with the true performance variations in the near future.